Hey Cruisers, welcome back. It is an encore performance of our Sail Away Social Hour. This is our virtual bartending event. Today I'm going to be making four Princess Cruises drinks, some wonderful cocktails. Today we're gonna make the Mayan Heat, which is a tequila and kind of an orangey cocktail. The Italian Sunset, which is gin, and Aperol, two of my favorite things. And we're gonna make a mocktail called Strawberries on Fire with a little bit of jalapeno in it, and Junior's gonna drink that one. And then we are going to make another princess favorite, the Mint Divine. Thank you all so much for being here. Tonight's episode is brought to you by our friends at CruiseLine.com and Shipmate app. If you're not already friends with Cruise Tips TV on Shipmate app, go at us right now. And be sure to set a price alert on your next cruise at CruiseLine.com. Get on it, guys guys, get on it. So how is everybody doing in the chat? We want to know what is in your glass. Also want to let you guys know that um, we have officially begun a new month. It is now April and we want to welcome you guys to April Palooza. That's what we decided to name this month, April Palooza. We have so many fun surprises in store for you. You guys have inspired a lot of the episodes, but we're not going to tell you what they are just yet. We have some things that we've ordered that we need for these surprise episodes. So the date setting is a little tricky because you guys know it's really hard to get stuff on Amazon right now, right? Like things come really slowly unless they're essential. So the timing of those fun live stream events is going to depend on when we get some of the things that we need to have these great parties, but it is going to be so much fun. You guys are going to love April Palooza. We're going to continue with frequent live streams and have a ton of fun. Let's see what's in everybody's glass. Mary Ellen Dillon's got a Malibu and pineapple. Yum. Ooh, sounds good. Lori's drinking tea. Lori loves her tea. Paul has some red wine. Jennifer has a yummy, a diet peach snapple. Mm-mm, Jim, that sounds good. Quarantini with three blue cheese stuffed olives. <laughs> Bonia's having milk. Hey, whatever works, whatever floats your boat. Also want to give a huge shout out to our friend Seth. Um, SoCal Seth, I don't know if he's in the chat yet, but Seth inspired this particular idea for a live stream. So I just want to thank him so much for that. There's a bunch of you also in the chat who said that you should be on a cruise right now. So this episode, if today was your sail away day, if tomorrow was your sail away day, this episode is dedicated to you. We are thinking about you. I know some of you were going to renew your vows. My friend Andrew in the chat was going to be doing that. And I just want you to know that our heart goes out to you guys and we feel your pain and we're going to continue continue to have as much fun as we possibly can throughout the month. I see my friend Kimberly in the chat said, Riley says hi. We're all watching. Riley's drinking lemonade and Al and I are drinking fresh beer from a brewery. Hi, Quackenbush family. I'm so glad you guys are here. It's really wonderful to see you. Mr. Chris Hibbs TV, are you okay? You forgot the, oh, you forgot the iPad for the chat. Okay, that's cool. All right, you guys. So we're going to do so much fun stuff today. Um, we are going to be making, I think the first cocktail we're going to make is the Mayan Heat. So um, Mr. Cruise Tips TV, do you want to um, wait a while? Let's not put the recipe up yet. Let's hold on that. And I'm going to tell them a little bit about the Mayan Heat because we have all the time in the world tonight. In fact, if you guys have any cruise questions in a little while, maybe wait until we've been in for about five or 10 minutes. Um, feel free to ask cruise questions. We can answer them in between kind of making cocktails and things like that. We'd love to, um, we'd love to do that. Oh, another fun thing I wanted to tell you guys, um, you guys are all familiar with Doug at Cruise Radio. He has a wonderful podcast and an awesome website, cruiseradio.net. Um, well, our friend Doug has been doing some really awesome cooking stuff lately on his channel. I affectionately call it Cooking with Dougie. I know he's probably going to hate me when I say that. But he has been doing such a good job of recreating some mostly carnival types of food. On his website, if you go to his website or his Facebook page and you search warm chocolate melting cake, you can actually see a cool time lapse video of him making warm chocolate melting cake at home, and it's actually really easy to do. I mean, if you're comfortable in the kitchen. Um, so be sure to check that out. He also made that the Carnival Fruit Loop Crusted um, French Toast, and it's phenomenal. So you guys need to check out his cooking videos because he's doing a really good job. And they are bite-sized videos, really easy to watch, and they just kind of go by in a flash, but really fun. So go, che go check out cruiseradio.net and search for his recipes. They are fantastic and so fun. Hi, Richard from Canada. Good to see you here. Hi, my friend, Papa Mozu. My mom is drinking, guys. My mom is drinking soju. 
right now and pomegranate juice. Now my mom is doing that because when we go out and we have Korean barbecue, that is our tradition, and this is like two or three times a year, we get soju, which is a really fun, like Korean, I don't even know what it is. Mama, is it, I don't even know if it's rice wine, it tastes a little bit like sake, I don't even know what it is, I just know it's Korean. And we put a little bit of pomegranate liqueur in it and it's just so good. All right guys, so Mr. Cruise Tips TV, can we put up the recipe for the Mayan heat on the screen and maybe leave it there for just a little bit? Um, the Mayan heat, guys, is what we're gonna make now. It's supposed to be uh, made with Patron silver tequila, but I don't have that. I have 1800, which is a wonderful brand. Lime juice, agave, and triple sec. Guys, they did not have triple sec at the store. That's just how things are right now. The cupboards are bare at the store. <laughs> I don't know what else to do. So I'm going to use the Cointreau that I used last time we did this virtual bartending event and hope that it turns out a-okay. And this also has some jalapeno in it and yeah, some lime juice. So that's the Mayan heat. Let's get started on it. We are going to, let me see if this is a muddler one. Okay, this one's gonna be made in a cocktail shaker. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're gonna put a little slice of jalapeno in the cocktail shaker. So here's our beautiful little jalapeno. I haven't even sliced it up yet, but we're going to, I'm gonna do a few slices, I think, of the jalapeno because we have a few drinks that call for it. So I'm gonna put just, I'm gonna put actually two slices of jalapeno. Which camera are we on right now, honey? The little one, okay, so I'm gonna put these two slices of jalapeno in the cocktail shaker. And then I'm gonna set aside this spicy sucker for a junior's cocktail a little bit later. Normally I would wash my hands after I did that, but since I don't have a sink right here, we cannot do that, so I just will be very careful not to touch my face. Okay, now it says to gently press that into a cocktail shaker. So I think it just wants a tiny bit of a muddle. Okay, there we go. So we're gonna put a little bit of ice in there. Now my friend Tommy at Always Be Booked um, on his podcast, I think it was 125 or 135, he gave me some tips on how to do my cocktails a little better. I actually asked him for some help because I'm not really all that good at this. And he said that I need to do a better job with my glasses, which I do, but I couldn't go shopping, so we did our best. But the best advice he gave me is to use the proper type of ice, which is smaller chunks of ice when I'm using a shaker. Because I was using just the big fancy, as Tommy called them, hipster cubes. <laughs> so we're moving away from the hipster cubes here. And we are gonna put in just some regular, little tiny kind of chopped up ice. I think that's gonna be a better result. There we go, yeah, this is gonna be so good. Okay, so we've got some good ice in there. Now what do we do? Let's see, and then it's ice and all of the ingredients. So we're gonna do two ounces of tequila, holy cow. And keep in mind guys, do not worry. I am not going to drink all of this. I'm not crazy. Please know I will taste them all, but I'm not gonna drink them all, so do not worry for my health. Um, last time I had a lot of comments the next morning, like, hey, are you hungover? And the answer was no. I even had, went to work the next day and I was totally fine. I will continue to be fine. So we put our two ounces of tequila in, and then we're gonna put half an ounce of lime juice, and I wish I had smell vision right now because you guys, that tequila smells so good. Smells like Mexico. So half an ounce of lime juice. So I'm gonna go, I pre-squeezed my lime this time because I figured it was probably a good idea. There we go. Half an ounce of lime juice. Half an ounce of agave syrup. I'm gonna go really light on that because I don't like things super sweet, but there's about probably a little less than half an ounce. And then we're gonna do, what's next? A quarter ounce of triple sec. Again, I do not have triple sec, so I'm using Cointreau. Have it from last time, why not? And here we go. Popping that in. Oh, this is gonna be so tasty, you guys. The Mayan heat, I'm excited. Mr. Chris Sibs TV, do you wanna put the recipe up again? Oh, you already did, huh? You put it up twice, you're so good. And so now, let me make sure I didn't forget anything. We're gonna shake, shake, shake. Flick 3 Red is here from Scotland. Hey, Flick 3 Red, good to see ya. Okay, here we go, shake, shake, shaking this baby up. Oh yeah, this one's gonna be good. Now this one says you're supposed to strain over um, some fresh ice. So, I mean, I guess we could do that. I probably would just like to drink it with the ice, but I will pop a few fresh cubes in there and then we will strain it over this beautiful little glass right here. Okay, I move that up a little bit. Shake, shake, shake. All right. 
So we're gonna strain this over some fresh ice and then we're gonna garnish it with another slice of jalapeno. Oh, this is so pretty. Oh yay, I got the, I got the quantity right this time, you guys. I'm so proud of myself, woo! Oh my goodness, so how do we garnish it with a jalapeno? I'm thinking just float a little teeny tiny sliver on top. Isn't that cute? So what do we think, finished product? So pretty. Okay, let's give it a taste. Did you hear that, sweetie? What was that? The wind blew something over in the kitchen. Okay, I'm excited to try this one. I wonder how spicy it's gonna be. Thank you, Shannon, for the comfort with knowing that um, substituting the Cointreau was okay for the triple sec. I had no idea, but I know they're both kind of orangey. Linda, the bowl is not FabFitFun. If this is the one you're talking about, this is some kind of a collectible from my grandmother, I think. Okay, let's taste this. Oh my gosh, my friends from Sharon at Sea are here. Good to see you guys. I'm sorry I missed your brunch this morning. I saw you were doing a fun brunch event. Tasting the Mayan heat. Mm. What? So good. Whoa. Tommy from Always Be Booked is in the house. Tommy, thank you for the tips. I know this is not an appropriate glass, but I'm trying, I'm doing my best. And thank you very much for all the tips. You were so right about the ice. I'm already loving it. I like the way that it feels in the shaker. You are dead on. Okay, this is really spicy, you guys. Whoa. Mmm. That one is so yum. Wow, that is so good. That is really strong. Yummy. Okay, Mr. Cruz Sips TV, any questions that you've seen come in or should I go ahead and go to the next one? Okay, so Tommy says that Cointreau is an upgrade from triple sec. Yeah, when I looked up triple sec, it looked like one of those like De Kuyper's, like cheap flavored liqueurs. So I didn't feel like I was missing out too much. I felt like it was gonna be okay. Yeah, I know. Um, Steve, I like spicy drinks. I think it's, I think they're wonderful. I just don't like them too, um, I don't like my drinks too sweet. So I would actually say that this one just tastes like a margarita, by the way. So if you're a margarita fan, the Mayan heat is definitely margarita-ish. Mm-mm-mm. Thanks, Vernon. You like that second camera? Cool, cool. Okay, guys, what is next? Next up, Mr. Cruise Tips TV, we are making the Italian sunset. Yes, Carol, it's very spicy with the jalapeno. Woo! Feeling it. Now, the Italian sunset is a really fun combo. This one is Aperol, Bombay Sapphire, lemon juice, simple syrup, and two dashes of Angostura bitters and an orange slice or twist for um, garnish. Now, I had never purchased bitters before, so this is another thing that I've done to add to my cocktail collection. And tell me if it's just me, but these are some of the things that I think are gonna happen in the next two months in some of our lives. This is definitely what's gonna happen in my life. A, my bar setup is posh now. I had, my bar setup before consisted of grapefruit juice and gin, and I was perfectly, perfectly happy with that. Like, I didn't care, I didn't need anything else. I now have probably 10 bottles in my cupboard and I am, so, I think it's so fun because to me it's kind of a funny silver lining. It doesn't mean I'm drinking all the time. In fact, I'm probably drinking less than I was before because I'm working at home and there's just not as much of a sense of like, it's Friday night. It's like every day is a little bit more like, well, I'm already home. But I am so excited about my little bar setup that I told Mr. Cruz Tips TV today that I want him to buy me a bar cart. Like one of those cute little, um, like I want like a, a white, with a gray marble top little bar set up because I think it's just fun. So I think that's gonna happen. Another thing that's gonna happen in the next few months is you guys are gonna find out just how blonde I am not. If you'd like to take a look at my roots, full disclosure, my hair is getting darker and darker every year and y'all are about to find out just how dark my hair is. So yeah, my <laughs> <laughs> my bar setup's growing and so are my roots. Let's make the Italian sunset. We'll pop the, um, we'll pop the recipe up again later, but just so you guys know, if you'd like the recipes for these drinks, they are down in the description of the video. So, <laughs> oh my goodness. Dawn and Jimbo Pickett, we need to get your bar stocked. So fun. Felicia, tell me what kind of bar cart you have. I love it. <laughs> Oh my gosh, yes, Dave, the Trade Winds Bar on Royal Class Princess Ships, yummy margarita list. Don't you love that they have a margarita list? 
Hi, cash addict Mel Stowe. Good to see you. Okay, guys, let's make the Italian sunset. So, um, my cocktail shaker is otherwise occupied with stuff. So I'm going to pour that out because this time I actually made a little less than I needed. So for the Italian sunset, we are going to start with a little bit of ice in our cocktail shaker. I'm going to just use my hands because there's really no risk of germs right now. It's just me, myself, and I. All right, there we go. So we've got our ice. Boy, you really need a little bar towel around when you're making these drinks, right? Okay, and then we're gonna do one ounce of Aperol. If you're not familiar with Aperol, it is a wonderful Italian liqueur. Oh my goodness sakes! Kimberly, thank you so much for the super chat. Kimberly said the bar setup is off the charts. Thank you so much, Quackenbush family. We love you guys, you're so precious. And yes, it's really fun to have a bar setup. I'm like, this is cool, this is really cool. I need to be careful how much money I spend, but it's still cool. Okay, thank you Kimberly and Al and Riley. Um, one ounce of Aperol, here we go. That might've been a little more than an ounce, but I don't care because I love Aperol, it's so good. So delicious, and this is what I fell in love with on MSC Seaside. Last March, basically a year ago, we went on MSC Seaside, stayed in the Yacht Club, and fell in love with it. Next up is one ounce of Bombay Sapphire Gin, my favorite gin. Costco has this, BevMo has this size, and so does, if you have Albertsons um, around, they have that too. These big, huge 1.75 liters of Bombay Sapphire are wonderful if you are a gin drinker. I think that we have a newbie in the house, a new subscriber. Army Bratz Mommy is a new subscriber. Welcome to you. Thank you so much for being here. Yay, so fun. All right, we're gonna do 0.75 ounces of lemon juice, which means Sherry's just gonna pour what she thinks 0.75 ounces is. That sounds about right. Yum. And then we're gonna do half an ounce of simple syrup. All right, and I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna guesstimate that on the, on the underside a little because I'm not a big sugar lover. But this is the simple syrup in a uh, Trader Joe's honey jar that um, we use these honey jars. We got these honey jars over the holidays and they're really fun for reusing. So I've been enjoying those. All right, what's next? Oh, you guys two dashes of Angostura bitters. Now I thought bitters were gonna be bitter, but they're really not bitter at all. Oh my goodness sakes. Miguel, I'm so sorry your cruise got canceled. At the beginning of this show, we dedicated today's episode to everyone who was supposed to be on a cruise this week. So Miguel and family, this one is for you, my friend. This reminds me of, uh, it feels like it has nutmeg in it. You guys, what is, all of the things in here, I don't understand what they mean. When I looked at the ingredients, I didn't understand what it meant. It said alcohol, water, sugar, gentian, natural flavors, and what is gentian? I don't know what that is. Oh, it's from Trinidad and Tobago. It must be a spice. Maybe it is like nutmeg. Does someone know? Anyway, you guys, it is so lovely. I thought it was gonna be yucky, but it's not. Oh, okay, that's, that dash is, there we go. I think I put like four dashes, but I really like the flavor of this, so that's okay. Stephen Eddy, welcome, hello. Yes, Mary Ellen, we can buy liquor in our grocery store here. I know in some states you can't, like in Utah, in some areas of Utah, I know you, you can't, um, but here in California, you definitely can buy it in the grocery store. Okay, guys, so we're going to now make the Italian sunset. Mr. Cruise Tips TV, do you wanna put the recipe up again while I shake, shake, shake? And we're gonna put this one, guys, in a glass with a slice of orange. And I have a special surprise for this one that I went off recipe. I'm sorry, Sue Pola, you were supposed to pour seaside today. That's so brutal. Oh my goodness. Okay. Hi, Sonia. Hi, Blaine. Blaine, it's used for digestion. Is that the bitters, Blaine? So cool. Okay guys, so this is the glass that I'm gonna be using for this one. Now, I, Junior and I, Junior had the idea to make some tangerine juice ice cubes. So we're actually gonna put the tangerine juice ice cubes um, in here. And for our Italian sunset, we're gonna pour over those. I think that'll be so nice. So I'm gonna to try to just strain and pour, but if it's not enough, I might pour out some of the liquid from the other, from the rest of the glass. Oh no, it's perfect. I'm doing so much better with my quantities this time, you guys. I feel like I'm getting my skills. And then we have a beautiful orange slice for a garnish. And here is the Italian sunset from Princess Cruises. And I cannot wait to taste this one. 
Holy cow, that is good. Lori said gentian is an herb. Angie, I am probably going to bruise myself doing that. Banging on my hand, I know. I'm so bad. Mmm. That is so good. Okay, I'm going to move that over there. Delicious. I'm excited. I love it. Ah, mom wants to know, where's Junior? He's reading, mom. He's, re he's into Harry Potter again. Like super into Harry Potter again. In fact, we're re-watching all the movies, which has been so fun. Nick, yes, the painkiller. Uh-huh. Yes, Jim. Junior is clever. I know the tangerine juice is really nice in there. I know. He's excited. Oh, Jamie's in the house from Sharon at Sea. He said, hi, Sherry. Jamie here. These recipes are too detailed. Can we just go with a little of this, a little of that, and the rest of the glass filled with alcohol? Yeah, totally, Jamie. Last time when we did this, that's kind of what I told everybody. I'm like, look, this is my measuring cup. This is all you're getting. I'm going to measure into this, and that's, that's it. It's as precise as it's going to be, but yeah, I know. I, that's usually how I do things, but this has been so fun. In fact, Jamie... The last time that we did this was, I have to say, it was one of the top five most fun live streams we've ever done. And I'm, I'm doing this again for myself. Like, selfishly, I wanted to come back and do this again because it was so fun. It's like a party. It's like we're all hanging out together and having cocktails and everything. I'm taking it very easy, though, today. Guys, I'm, I'm not going to go nuts with the cocktails, I promise. But I, it is hard not to drink them because they're so, so good. And this is fun. We're learning a new skill. Susie Q said, Cayman Jack's mojitos here. Cheating over there. Yum. So good. Travel with Tess. Yes, you've got to try all these drinks. They're so good. Oh, thank you, Deb, for the info on that. That's so cool. Mmm. Loving that spicy one. Okay, guys. Let's make a mocktail for Junior. I know, Dave. I'm channeling Isaac, right? <laughs> So let's make a mocktail for Junior. Today we're going to be making the strawberries on fire. Mr. Crucifix TV, feel free to put that one up. And let's all join uh, together and wish Vicki Connor a happy birthday. Happy birthday, Vicki. And Daniel Byram, thank you so much for the super chat. Cheers back at you, my friend. I like your profile pic. So awesome, thank you. Oh, Bill Bayango said I need a virtual hug. I feel like this virus thing is the worst April Fool's joke ever. I know. I know, but it's going to get better. We're all going to get through this together, and we are sending you a virtual hug, Bill. We're always here for you. All right, so strawberries on fire, guys. Here is what it is. It's one slice of fresh jalapeno. I'm going to dial back the jalapeno a little bit for Junior. Um, strawberry, lime juice, agave syrup, and Sprite. Now, Junior and I don't have Sprite on hand, so he agreed that I could use the ginger beer that we're gonna be using later in the Mint Divine. Ginger beer is non-alcoholic, so we're gonna use ginger beer instead of, um, instead of Sprite. So there is a modification. Thanks for wishing Vicki a happy birthday, everybody. I appreciate that. Ashley, yes, a lot of these drinks should be on Royal Princess. You should be able to find them. So yeah, definitely, you're gonna have a blast with that drink package. You're gonna have so much fun. Thank you so much, Jennifer. It's our pleasure. We love being here too. And you guys, like I keep saying, I said this all month of March, what we realized during this time is that you guys are holding us up as much as we're providing this, you're helping us so much to stay focused on the future, to stay positive, to stay happy, and to hang out with our friends. And there's just absolutely the best. And yes, Vicki Macron McCree, I agree with you. They are the best and they are lifesavers for us too. So let's make a mocktail, guys. For those of you who don't drink alcohol, this one is for you. This one's for the kids in the house. Mr. Cruz Sips TV Jr., they're going to love this one. So now I actually don't want to make it in a glass that had alcohol in it. So I'm starting with a fresh glass. This one does not require a shaker. So this is going to be the glass for that one. We're going to start with a teeny tiny slice of jalapeno. I'm going to go really minimal this time, guys, because this jalapeno is very spicy. I'm going to pop it in there. Okay, and then we're going to put in one strawberry. So I have my little bowl of strawberries here. We're going to put one strawberry into the, to the um, cup, and we're going to muddle the strawberry and the jalapeno together with, oh, we're supposed to put the simple syrup in and muddle it with simple syrup. Let me do that real quick. Okay, there we go. A little bit of simple syrup. So it says that you're supposed to put, oh shoot, that was supposed to be agave. Oops. Here, I'll put a splash of agave in too. There we go. All right. It's all the same thing. It's all kind of sweet. doesn't matter too much. Okay, we're going to muddle the strawberry, the jalapeno, and the syrup together. 
This one's really, really easy. And then after we do that, all we have to do is add the lime juice, some ice, and, ooh, that strawberry is really sticking on there. Oh my goodness sakes. Who just gave us a big old super chat? Soup Hola said, thanks for keeping everyone's spirits who have their had their cruises canceled. Love you all. Thank you so much, Soup Hola. We love you too. We appreciate you being here. We appreciate the support in so many different ways from our community. We appreciate you very much too. And thank you for the super chat. Okay. All right, guys, this one's kind of, feels kind of sticky gooey, but we kind of just made a little strawberry jalapeno mash up there. And then now what we're gonna do is pop in four ounces of the ginger beer instead of the Sprite. And it looks like all we really have to do after that is add a little bit of ice. So let's do a little bit of ice here. Actually, we're gonna put the ice in first. I'm gonna use my larger cubes of ice on this one. There we go. Why not? There we go, there we go. And then we're gonna pop open this ginger beer. This ginger beer is being shared with the mint divine tonight. There we go. All right. And here goes the ginger beer. Just a little bit of that. I'm gonna stir it with a knife. And then it says that you garnish this with a fresh strawberry. Now, I don't really know how to garnish a glass with a strawberry, so I'm gonna show my non-bartender skills right here, and I'm gonna pop that on there just like that. And then I know my little boy, and my little boy really likes mint. So I'm going to pop a little sprig of mint into that glass as well. And there we have it. This is my version of the strawberries on fire. Oh my goodness, Stephen, Eddie, thank you so much. Oh my goodness for the super chat. I missed that one a few moments ago. My apologies. Thank you, thank you, thank you so very much. Appreciate it. Okay, let me taste this and then I'm gonna give it to Junior. He can come out and get it. Oh my goodness. Very good, very gingery and it's not too spicy for him at all. So cute. Are you gonna go get him? Mr. Crucibs TV just went to go get Junior. He's gonna have his little mocktail now. Oh, that is so good, you guys. So do you guys like ginger beer? Do you find that it's kind of different from um, ginger ale? Kinda, sorta? I think so too. Oh my goodness, is Seth in the house? Hi, baby. Do you wanna try this? Come on in. There you go, enjoy. Take a sip, tell me what you think. Good. Is it good? You can take it with you. He's like, it's probably a little bit sweet for him. I feel like with the, um, the ginger beer guys, you don't necessarily need the simple, the simple syrup or the agave, not necessarily. Hey, Seth, glad you made it. We dedicated this episode to you. This was an awesome, your, your inspiration for sure. You always have inspiration for us. So thank you, we're glad you're here. All right, guys. So our last cocktail tonight is called the Mint Divine. And Mr. Chris Tips TV is gonna pop that one up on the screen. This one is five fresh mint leaves two cucumber slices, two ounces of Bombay Sapphire Gin, lime juice, simple syrup, and ginger beer. So it looks like um, you're supposed to shake it, but I don't know if it's a good idea to shake ginger beer because it seems to me like that might be just a little bit of a bad idea, but, oh, lid down. Um, I don't know, Is it, if there's a little carbonation in there, it makes me kind of nervous. Okay, so we are going to, what are we doing here? Okay, we're muddling some cucumber. Here we go, we'll move that ginger beer. We're gonna pop a couple slices of cucumber, here we go, into this. And we are going to also put in the five mint leaves, but you guys know this, is, this precision just doesn't work for me. So we're just gonna put in a whole bunch of mint. We have mint growing like wildfire in our backyard, so it's gonna be more than five leaves for me. All right, there we go. Okay, so we've got the mint and the cucumber slices, and we're going to gently muddle those in the cocktail shaker. Why not? Peggy, did I miss the lime juice? I did, I missed the lime juice and the strawberries on fire, shoot. Hi, Marcy from Canada, good to see ya. All right, we're muddling some mint and some cucumber for the mint divine. This is another fun Princess Cruises cocktail. And everything gets stuck on my muddler here, so I'm gonna have to take it off with a knife. It's kind of gross, really. 
There we go. I want to add jalapeno to it. I keep adding jalapeno to everything, but maybe I shouldn't do that. It's gonna be, everything's gonna to be too spicy. So the next thing we need is two ounces of Bombay Sapphire. Twist my arm. I'm not complaining about that. All right, here we go. All right, that's at least one and a half ounces. So let's just do another like half ounce there. Okay, perfect. And then we're gonna do 0.75 of lime juice. I'm gonna go ahead and go to town and just put the rest of this lime juice in here, guys, because this is our last cocktail and I like it limey anyway. And we're gonna put a little splash of ginger beer in there. Still kind of afraid to shake this with a ginger beer, but we're gonna do it anyway. So a little splash of ginger beer. It says you're supposed to put, you know, it actually doesn't tell you how much ginger beer, does it? Huh, interesting. So we're gonna get some ice in there, small chunks. Thank you, Tommy, for helping me with the ice advice. Ice advice. Okay, there we go. This one's really full, you guys. Okay, so for this one, it looks like we're gonna pour it into the glass with the ice, and then we're gonna garnish it when we're done. Whoa, yep, shouldn't have put the ginger beer. I can feel it, it's getting explodey. So we're just not gonna shake it anymore. We're just gonna put it right in the glass. Whoa, that is too funny, guys. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, you can't put carbonated stuff in a shaker. I don't know why it tells you to do that, but that's okay. So what is our garnish? That makes me realize I never got to use my little, um, I made a little orange um, spiral thingy. What are these called? I don't know what this is called. It has a name in the cocktail world, but you're supposed to garnish something with it. It's really pretty. I'm gonna put that on top of this other cocktail over here. I'm gonna put that on the, um, on the Italian sunset. But this one is supposed to be garnished with a lime wedge and fresh mint. So here we go. Fresh mint and we've got some lime here. Perfect. There it is. Okay, let's try the mint divine. Oh, this looks nice. I like it. Whoa, yeah. Probably shouldn't have put all that lime juice in there. Tasting that. It kind of took it over. That's my fault, but it's still really good. Oh my goodness, my buddy Jerome is in the house with a super chat. Thank you so much, Jerome. And thank you, Brenda Beretti. Oh, I appreciate it. Jerome said, thanks for remembering those of us who should be cruising right now. Jerome, not only do I remember those who are cruising right now, but also those of us who are essential workers and are still working right now and working hard. And I know that that's you, my friend. So thank you so much for all that you're doing. I really appreciate it. All right, Nicholas Musial said, hi, thank you so much for the fun cruise content. You are welcome, my friend. And right now, Nicholas, it's just life content, right? We're just doing whatever we can do to stay positive and keep focused on the future and adapt and keep our audience super happy. And you guys have been feeding us the most amazing ideas. <laughs> Dave Gibson said, explodey. I love it when you talk techie. Yeah, Dave, I know I'm so techie. It really got kind of explodey there, didn't it? Oh my goodness, so funny. Nicholas, did I thank you for the super chat? I don't think I did. Thank you so very much. Um, I just saw that and I love your little super sticker, Nicholas. That's so cute, thank you. So what did you guys think? Um, what was your favorite cocktail? Edouard Beauvais, I agree. I feel like the ginger beer should have come afterwards, but on the Princess website, it clearly said to put it in the cocktail shaker. It didn't feel right to me, so I should have known better than that. All right, hey, Sean and Casey, good to see you guys. And cheers to you too, Seth. Okay, so my favorite cocktail of the night, without a doubt, is going to be the Mayan Heat, which is the tequila-based, basically tastes like, it tastes like a margarita to me. I want a little bit more ice in this, though. I feel like it needs a little bit more ice, so we hang out and chat for a little bit. I'm gonna cool it down a little bit. And I also really, really love the Italian Sunset, the Aperol-based cocktail. This one's great, so I'm gonna taste them both back to back. Mmm. Mm -mm -mm. Hi, Terry Pash from Arizona. Good to see you. Ooh, these actually go kind of good together. You guys think this is probably me all the time. It's really not, not even on a cruise. I don't walk around with two cocktails even on a cruise. Daniel, better late than never. That's so great that you went to BJ's. I've been craving pizza, even though I don't like pizza, just because I can't have it, I've been craving it. Hi, Ken, glad you're here. You're not late, you're fine. Andrew, favorite drink, gin and tonic with, gin and tonic with lime. Yes, travel with Tess, those are my two favorites too. Angie said, this is kind of like that new bar on Princess where they make your drink under a camera and it goes up on the big screen. Yes, Angie, I love it. Mmm, these are so good, you guys, wow. 
I am loving this. Okay. What is everybody else thinking about the drinks? Yeah, Felicia, it's so delicious. I'm loving it. <laughs> Andrew's medallion app isn't working to order a drink. That's <laughs> so funny. Oh my gosh. Ooh, Nikki, Rob Roy. Yum. Sounds delicious. Yes, Shannon, if I have a cocktail in each hand, I can't touch my face, right? The whole touching your face thing, though, like if you haven't left your house in two weeks, why can't you touch your own face? I kind of have a fundamental problem with that. Like, I'm sorry, but I haven't left my house. Well, yeah, I probably have, actually, but still. Oh, my goodness sakes. Whoa, Tara and Glenn just did a shot of Fireball. That is the spirit. Banya, you like it when I hold two cocktails. You love so funny. Everly Newman, white Russian. Yum. That is so good. Mm -mm -mm. I love this. You guys, this is so fun. So needless to say, we're going to be doing a lot more fun things like this throughout the month of um, April. If you have any drinks that you'd like me to make, let me know. But understand that my grocery store is not well stocked right now, and I'm trying not to go out too much. Mike and Cheryl and I have been talking about me making the deep sea martini from Princess for like two months now. I finally found the curacao today, but my grocery store didn't have pineapple juice of all, like literally couldn't find pineapple juice. So I'm like, okay, I need sour mix, pineapple juice, and curacao. At some point, I'm going to find all of those things, um, and we're going to make that. So... Yeah, I know. I think so too, Angie. Like the face touching is like if you're out and about, but if you're in your own house, I feel like I'm not going to stop touching my own face. Like, I don't know. I just don't understand it. Um, thank you, Brenda. Please tell the boys hi for me. I'm sure Junior is loving that cocktail right now, that mocktail. Hi, Riley. She said, my mom asks, what are you guys doing for dinner? Oh, Riley, tonight Junior and I are going to make a big batch of... Um, turkey meatballs. So here's what goes in our meatballs, Riley, and you guys should try this. So Riley, today when I was at the store, I got a big giant two pound thing of ground turkey, and we're gonna put it in our KitchenAid stand mixer. We're gonna add breadcrumbs, eggs, fresh cream. I know cream seems like a weird thing to put in meatballs, but it makes them delectable. And I'm gonna put fresh herbs in there. We've got some oregano in the garden and we've got some parsley in the garden. So Junior's gonna chop those up. We're gonna put some dried herbs and some salt and pepper. And then we're gonna roll them into a ball and then we're gonna put them in the oven to bake and we're gonna freeze them, Riley, so that while we're home for the next little bit, right, that we've got meatballs we can pull out and we can make meatballs sandwiches. We can make spaghetti and meatballs. We can just have meatballs on a toothpick for lunch. So we love meatballs. Junior and I love to make them. So I think that's what we're going to do tonight. But Riley, what should I put with my meatballs? Should I make them with rice, pasta? Should we have them with vegetables? Riley, you tell me, and I'll try to pull it off. Ashley N. said, is Princess your favorite cruise line? They are definitely one of our favorite cruise lines, Ashley. We have been on 10 or 11 Princess cruises. We've sailed with them the most, so that should tell you that we love them, but we really do love other cruise lines as well. We love MSC Cruise Line, especially the Yacht Club. We love Carnival. We love Holland America, Norwegian, Royal Caribbean. Excuse me. We do all of them. Yeah. Thanks, Riley. I'm glad your mom liked it. Jim, the meatball recipe is definitely dump cook. So definitely go breadcrumbs, eggs, cream, herbs, salt, and pepper in any quantity that looks right to you and just mix it up. I think that's probably going to be good. Okay. Sassafras, the Miami Vice. I'll check into that. Thank you so much. Natasha, you meal prep today? Yeah, it's so good. I think I'm going to do that for the week too. I like having my lunches ready when I'm working. It's been so nice. Even though I'm home working um, three or four out of the five days of the week, I'm doing payroll on Mondays, which is definitely an essential task. So I found it easier to be in the office to process payroll. But um, yeah, Sassafras says noodles and butter. Yum. Um, Chica says veggies and pasta. Yes. Everly said pasta. So good. I'm sorry, Flick 3 Red. We're dedicating today's episode to all of our friends who were supposed to be on cruises right now. We're so sad. Yum, Janine. That sounds so fancy. I need to look at this. You hang out. You hang in there, Janine. Working full-time and homeschooling is hard. We hear you. We are doing the same right now. It is a labor of love. But I know, Janine King, I know in my heart that this experience is going to change all of us for the better. We're going to find 
new ways to appreciate those closest to us. We're going to find new, more simpler ways of enjoying life. And I just really believe that. I really do. I'm already feeling some of that. So hang in there, my friend. Ashley said, if anyone has a future cruise right now, the price has dropped for Princess and they'll match the new price. Um, very, very good advice, Ashley. Yes, contact your travel agent. Try to contact Princess if you can. I think that's a good idea. Ashley said they have good pina coladas on Princess. Yes, Seth, tacos and tequila. That's right. Seth, are you an 1800 fan? This is such a good brand of tequila. I love it. It's so good. It's so nice. Delish. I have not been drinking many of my drinks, much of my drinks. So I'm going to have a few more sips, you guys. All right. I'd love to answer some more um, questions. Isabel said, your last podcast was great, Sherry. Thank you, Isabel. For those of you who don't know about our podcast, it is available anywhere you listen, but you can also find it at cruisetipstv.com. It is now on our website. There is a very clear delineated podcast tab. So just go to cruisetipstv.com, click on podcasts, and you can um, listen to Mr. Cruise Tips TV and I. He is my co-host. So for those of you who would like to get to know him a little bit better, he does a really wonderful job. He is definitely the humor in the family, and I am not. We know that. So he's fun and funny. What was our last podcast? It was how the, how we believe the cruise industry is going to recover. And our podcast is called Cruise Tips TV Unplugged. You can also listen to it anywhere you listen to podcasts. I know. Sue Pola, I feel like I'm chained to the stove too, and you've cooked 350 meals. I feel the same way. But my problem is not so much the cooking. I enjoy it. I'm okay with it. It's the dishes. And also this expenditure on groceries, you guys. I spent $1,000 on groceries in March. I have never spent more than six or 700 bucks on groceries for our family in a month. And we use, um, I use a budgeting app. I'm a big Dave Ramsey fan. I know many of you are as well. And I use his paid, um, it's like $129 a year and it helped, and you pull all of your um, expenditures from your bank account into a budgeting app and it shows you how much you're spending. So I'm really aware of my money. I have never spent $1,000 on groceries. And I know that we haven't been eating out, but it seems like an enormous amount. Also, we haven't been eating a ton of food. We, I personally have not been eating more than normal. It is not that. I don't know what it is. Angie Crittenbrink says, Angie, did I say your name right? Crittenbrink, yes. I know it's hard to plan travel right now, but do you have an idea what you want your next cruise to be and when we can, when we can go out again? Angie, so I, uh, about a month ago, I would have told you I really want to go to Europe in June. I want to be on that inaugural for Enchanted Princess, but it's looking like that's probably not going to happen. I'm thinking that'll happen maybe in September or something. Right now, I'm thinking something kind of close to home would be really lovely. Um, maybe, Angie, a nice sailing on Carnival Panorama down to the Mexican Riviera. I would also be really thrilled if we could go to Alaska this summer because it's close. Um, I don't really have a, real, a strong interest right now in flying across country, but that wouldn't stop me. If it's safe, I would do the Caribbean. I would do the Southern Caribbean. I would, I'm really craving a cruise in the MSC Yacht Club right now. So maybe a, a nice Caribbean um, Yacht Club cruise to check out their private island would be really fun. Those are some of my thoughts. Um, it depends on financially where we are, too, at, on the other side of this. Right now, we're watching our finances really carefully um, because we don't know how long this will go on. And obviously... Um, YouTube is a big part of our, um, our income. It's a, it's a huge part of our, our life. It's my husband's full-time job essentially. And it's pretty much just been slashed in the last month. So we've got to be really aware. Um, thank heavens that I have a job and that it's a stable job and a stable company. I've been through 2.5 recessions with the organization I work for. I hope I survive this one as, as well. I survived the last two and I hope I survived this one, but Angie, it depends a lot on money. We've got to be cautious. I'm not booking anything until we're on the other side of it. And it is very likely that the next cruise we do will be extremely last minute and that we'll just spring it on you guys and be like, yep, this is what we're doing. Um, this is what we could afford. And this is what's happening. Peggy said, what is in an Aperol spritz? Peggy, it is one of the easiest drinks to make. It is Aperol, Prosecco, and a splash of club soda with a lime, um, excuse me, with an orange wedge. And that's it. 
Linda D said, Sherry, a big thank you for your help about a month ago with some online stuff. I did figure it out, like you said, and it worked out great for us. Sorry for the delay, but work is crazy now. Linda, that's okay. And you're welcome. We're always here for you. Thank you for the beautiful words. Yatu Bix said, has anyone actually received their re refund from Princess back onto the card? We canceled the cruise two weeks ago, but heard that it can take up to 60 days to get the money back. Is that so? Yatu Bix, it took us about three weeks to get our money back when we, um, when our Princess cruise was canceled on us. So I would think that that's probably about right for you. Yes, Angie, I feel like, yeah, we don't know. You're right, especially with your husband's job. We have to save money right now. It's so smart, you guys. Please be financially responsible. Um, cut your expenses, slash your expenses right now. Um, buying booze is probably not something I should have done. However, it is a business expense at this point. Joking. But no, um, I have slashed expenses greatly. You guys, I canceled my gym membership for three months. Um, I hate to do it, but it's $100 a month, and the gym is closed. I'm sorry, but I had to do it. I went through and looked at some of my subscriptions. I canceled them. I canceled my Amazon Music. I canceled some beauty stuff I had, was subscribed to. We have got to look after our financial houses more than ever. Plan on having a rough year. I'm planning on having a rough year, and we're planning at Cruise Tips TV on a 50% or more reduction in income. That's just reality. Um, but, but we know that these things can happen. Um, you know, this is this is why you have to have an emergency fund and some savings. Corey Pregnant said, I just checked my shipmate app and I could not see a price drop. How do I check for that? Corey, at this stage, what I would recommend you do is just go to the cruise line website and search for the cruise as if you hadn't booked it yet and just try to see what the prices are right now. So enter the same date, the same number of passengers, and the same cabin category. Peggy said, do any of the Alaskan cruises not stop in Canada? No, because Canadian ports are closed to July 1st. No, they all do, Peggy. It's, um, it's required by law, unfortunately. So that's what we're going to be seeing for right now. Steve said they quit their monthly 401k contributions for the next several months. It's not like you're making money in the market. Yeah, Steve, there were some financial um, contributions I pulled back on too. I pulled back on about $300 a month that was going into a fund that is uh, what I would consider unstable right now, and I cut it out. I mean, we decided to slash our expenses, and you just have to. You've got to do it. I mean, I unless you're not impacted by this, which we definitely are. Jim Ring said, cut expenses, but a thumbs up doesn't cost you anything, and it's good for your soul to hit that yes. You guys, thank you so much, and thank you for the thumbs up. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for keeping your subscription with us and just for being here. We appreciate you um, so much more than you could possibly know. Carol said her gym is not charging since they're closed. Carol, Ours is given an option to cancel, but they're um, encouraging us to keep our subscriptions. But we opted not to, just because we know for a fact we're not going to be there for a month or two. All right. Uh, Daniel Field said, Sherry, I know we're all really busy with all of this cruise talk, but I wanted to say we love your show. And your set inspires some hope, a home style we still want. Good. Yes, I know, Daniel. I'm so glad. And we have a lot of fun with our set. We try to change it up. It's interesting how the light is coming in through the set right now over here. It's really bright outside, so you can actually see the window behind it, which you can't always. Um, regarding the set, I'm not gonna say a whole lot more, but I I can tell you that Mr. Cruise Tips TV has some incredibly fun and big surprises for you guys in the month of April. It is going to be so good. You guys all really inspired um, some killer stuff in the month of April, and we just can't wait to share it all with you. All right, guys. Yes. So um, I <laughs> Sue Pola said, your vice is Starbucks. It's a necessity and you're keeping them in business. I have a lot of friends who are going to Starbucks every single day still too, even on lockdown. I know it's funny. I know. I know. S. Gladding said, some people will blow their stimulus check. Yeah. And I don't even know if we're going to get a stimulus check, partially because we're partially self-employed and our combined income may knock us out of it. You just never know. So I'm not counting on that at all, but it's true. We've got to be really careful. Michelle, that sounds very smart. Michelle said, we're only spending money on groceries, gas, and some minor entertainment right now. Everything else is on hold. Yeah. I think that's smart. Travel with Tess, you're getting some rain. Oh my goodness, it's raining near Napa. Travel so uh, travel with Tess, we're south of you in California, so I think that that, um, that, that um, rain is coming down. Seth said, jungle juice time. Lori said, bottoms up, Sherry, you guys are right. I'm way behind on my, on my drinking from last time. What do you want to say, sweetie? Uh, 
Oh, it's spicy, you guys. Oh my goodness. Crazy. Um, Sue Pola said, Cruise Tips TV, how often are you planning to do live streams during April? Twice a week. Twice a week. Um, we were doing three times a week in March. We're going to go down to two times a week. We're going to do probably one in the set. And then we're going to try to surprise you guys with some, not out and about like we're out on the town, but maybe in our backyard or something outdoors that's a little different, a little change of scenery. So Mr. Christmas TV is working on that. Jim, it's raining in Northern California. Oh my goodness. And in Lodi too, you guys, the rain's coming down to Southern California. Um, yes, Marcy, the cruises will come back, my dear. They're going to come back. We just don't know when, but I would be very optimistic by summer and fall. We're going to be back on the high seas. Okay. PJ, my buddy's in the house. Hi, PJ and Heather and the little baby girls. Been really trying hard to support local restaurants in our area. Really want them to still be around when this is over. PJ, I know we need to do more of that. I still haven't gone to a single restaurant where I live. The days that I do have to go into my office, I've been driving through Chick-fil-A on occasion and it's, they're so sweet there. They're so friendly and like working hard. Um, but that's the only place I have, have been. Oh, Karen Griffin. Thank you so much for the beautiful words. Kathy Dotson, we love you too. And thank you guys so much. Just being here, you guys, and watching and hanging out with us is just, you have no idea what it means to us to see your faces repeatedly in these live streams. It is a hard time and we are so thankful that even though you can't go on a cruise right now, that you choose to be hanging out with this cruise loving family. <laughs> it's like, it's incredibly special to us. Oh, hi Liberty Cruiser. So good to see you here. Okay, everybody. Well, I know Susie Q. I'm always here for you, my dear. Oh, thank you, Wendy. You liked the salsa recipe from Thursday night. Yeah, so you guys, what Wendy's talking about is she follows us over on Instagram. Please follow us on Instagram, Cruise Tips TV, all one word, no spaces, no nothing. Um, Junior and I have a segment that we do on Instagram called Cooking with Junior. And whenever we're just making dinner, we just do some little video and we post our recipes, which are always dump cook recipes, on our Instagram page. And it's been great. It's been a good way to teach him how to cook. I'm trying to get him in the kitchen. It's never easy. If you watch Cooking with Junior, you'll know he's very rough. He's very boy-like. He's like always slamming something around and like, you know, making huge messes. There's always flour everywhere. And he's like slamming things with knives. The other night when we were making tacos, he was banging on an avocado with a knife. But he's, he is a safe kid. Gabriella, I don't know what days the live streams are going to be in April, but we're going to get a schedule out to you soon. We're waiting for a shipment of a few items that we need for our live streams. You are going to love this. I promise. It's so great. Let's just say my husband is very creative and he's like, how about we do this? How about we do that? And I can't tell you yet because if the items don't come and we have to change our mind, um, then I don't want to let you down. Why don't you guys tell us in the chat right now, everybody, attention, attention, please tell us, what are your preferred days and times for live streams? Go. And we will look at it later. Sue Pola said, try Sherry's balsamic vinegar chicken instant pot recipe. It is amazing. While you guys are doing the tell Sherry what time you want us to go live thing, um, I'm going to tell you the instant pot chicken recipe my beautiful friend Susan likes. It is so easy. You just basically take um, one onion chopped in the instant pot, in an instant pot. Oh no, I got liquid on my dress. This dress hates liquid, you guys. My husband calls this the sweaty dress because if it gets any water or anything on it, it's like a mess. When we were, we we, we, I wore this on a cruise on Caribbean Princess and I picked up my son out of the pool and he was covered in water and he thought it was, we thought it was sweat at first. And so it's just been a joke. I don't really, I'm not really that sweaty, but anyway. Okay. So wait, I was answering a question. Oh, the balsamic chicken. And, and then I'm going to look at your days and times. Okay. The balsamic chicken recipe. So an onion in the instant pot, you can saute the onion in the instant pot or just put it in plain. A couple of chicken breasts, half, uh, about a quarter cup, quarter cup to a half cup of balsamic vinegar, quarter cup to a half cup of honey, and about a half a cup of chicken broth, and then um, 
go ahead and do high pressure for four minutes. And you can put that over rice. Um, Susan did it with sauteed veggies. She did hers with some sauteed zucchini and I think some rice, but it's lovely. Um, the honey and the balsamic vinegar and the broth just make a really beautiful sauce. And then you can just shred the chicken or slice it, but it's so good. Okay. So I'm seeing a lot of people say, please for, don't forget you guys, I need your time zone. If you're putting specific times, I need to know what time zone you are. I'm seeing a lot of you say any time. Um, I need specifics, time, day, and time zone, please. <laughs> Lori said, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, or Saturday. <laughs> oh, cute. <laughs> Go ahead, sweetheart, what'd you wanna say? That was cute, that's really cute, Lori, thank you. Um, Monday and Thursday, Lynette, that's what we were doing. I, I think Thursday nights are going to stay. I really like Thursday nights. I feel like Thursday is the new, um, Friday. Oh, you guys cooking with Doug is in the house. Doug from cruise radio is here with a huge and wonderful super chat. Doug, thank you. Cheers to you. Thank you so much. Doug said, thank you for putting so much into this. The production and drinks are spot on. Great work. Have you ever seen Doug in the chat? Mm -mm. Welcome Doug. Yes. Welcome, Doug. Thank you so much, Doug. Earlier on, I don't know if you were here, but I was telling everybody about cooking with Dougie and referring them over to your website to check out the warm chocolate melting cake and the beautiful jerk. It was jerk turkey burgers, right? They were so good. But thank you so much, Doug. You are so sweet. And we love Cruise Radio. You guys, I cannot emphasize enough how incredible Doug and his team's news coverage has been over this entire crisis situation, 20, literally 24 hour coverage every single day at cruiseradio.net. If you are not already following Doug, Twitter is an excellent place to do that because he's constantly kind of keeping you up to the minute. Also, he obviously he has his regular cruise radio podcast, but remember he has his cruise radio news briefs too. And you can enable those on Alexa. Now I'm afraid to say that because Alexa in my house is going to be like, yes, how can I help you? But um, yeah. So hi, Doug. Thank you so much for, for popping into the chat. We're so glad to see you here. And duh, obviously Doug has a great um, YouTube channel too. Thank you, Angie. I am, I, Doug has always been the, um, the gold standard for us too, and we agree. And he's also just a really great guy. Um, I had the pleasure of meeting Doug on Carnival Panorama finally after, you know, the seven years we've been doing this. Doug's been doing this since 2008, so he's been in the business a lot longer than us, but we finally got to meet, and it was just awesome. Um, I saw some questions coming in. Okay, so Angie said, you get off at 6 p.m. Pacific if we're talking about when to hang out. Okay, good. That is so good for me to know. So Angie, anything at 6 and on, you're okay. Christina, aloha from Utah. I love it. Um, okay, so Daniel and Nancy said anytime, maybe a pre recorded thing with Junior to stream in. Oh, that's a cute idea. Junior was on the podcast um, last Wednesday. So he was on the one about the future of cruising. He read the he read our iTunes reviews at the end and he sounded really cute. Shailene and Kurt said, is that payback for deleting her podcast episode, Doug? Obviously, Shailene and Kurt listen to the Cruise Radio podcast because, yeah, poor Doug. He lost a whole bunch of files, um, and our Diamond Princess Cruise Review was one of them. But, yeah, you guys listened to the podcast we did recently with Doug where we talked about, um, what do we talk about? Fun things to do while you're passing the time. And we just offered some fun creative ideas for different things that you can do right now. Doug had some really good ideas, too. So great. Aw, I know, Magna Christi. Your next cruise is in October 21 to the Canaries, hoping you can make it to Norway before then. Yeah, me too. Christina, I'm glad you like this color. We like the aqua too. Oh my goodness sakes. Okay, so Janet, oh, you're having a little problem with the chat. Be sure that you are logged into your YouTube account. That is the critical part of being able to do the live chat. And then click on the live chat button. Oh no, Andrew, I didn't know that your daughter's name was Alexa. That is crazy. Janine, you like Sunday mornings. Okay, got it. This is really good. I'm just kind of checking, um, checking this. Daniel Fields, thank you so much for the super chat. You are so good to us. Thank you. PJ, have a wonderful day. Um, enjoy. And PJ, before you go, I want you to know I bought the elderflower 
liqueur. I found it today. Finally found it. So we're going to make your um, elderberry spritz on a future episode. By the way, guys, these cocktail hours are coming back. Um, we are going to do this again. We just really think it's a ton of fun. Dave Gibson said, what shirt is Mr. Crucifix TV wearing? <laughs> He's wearing a plain old tee. He's wearing a plain old tee. I love it. Aww. Okay, you guys, we're going to go ahead and sign off. We're going to go make some meatballs, but thank you all so much for being here. To those of you who offered up some super chats tonight, I just want to thank you so very much for supporting our channel. We appreciate it. Um, it is never expected and always appreciated. Christina, I'm so glad you enjoyed the Panama Canal vlogs. Guys, watch the community tab here on YouTube and follow us on Facebook for lots of updates about our schedule for April Palooza. We have so much fun stuff coming and thank you for being here. Until next time, we'll see you on the high seas. Cheers to you. Cruise around the week. <laughs>